welcome everyone to our second elimination of TTS Survivor fans versus favorites. My first major question tonight is, what's the mood everyone? How are we doing? I am tired, first of all. I get off work at nine and I had to run to get the bus and still make myself look cute and presentable for Zoom. Um, but I really miss, I, I miss, I missed filming yesterday. I did. I said, I said something in the Slack. I was like, I just really wish we could be doing it. And Naomi made the great point that if we were doing it every night, I would be so stressed. It would be unbelievable. Um, and so even though we're in elimination, it's so nice to see everyone's faces because you're not my coworkers for the only people I see. You know what? That is so positive in such a lovely way. I'm so grateful none of you are my coworkers. <laughs> my coworkers are all a lot. They're a lot. Some more than others. I, I feel a lot of terrified energy for all of you guys being at your first elimination. I, am, am I imagining this or are you guys literally freaking out? Yeah. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, I feel bad, Matthew. I feel bad. You know, I like I almost forgot that someone had to go home and we won the first week and it was such a good feeling that it was so easy to forget about this part. Um, so I'm bummed. This is a bummer. This bummer. Yeah, um, this is kind of like by far the shittiest part. And um, this is your inaugural elimination. So just know it doesn't get easier, period. Well, I guess. I'm gonna go into some more specific questions for everyone. This season is really particularly interesting because this is the first season we do not have current TTS students and some, or a, uh, not theater school student or alumni at all. So I really wanna know what it's like creating alliances on Slack with people who you may never see in real life and who you literally have absolutely zip connection to. You know what? I'll speak as the um, resident non-DePaul student. Um, it is definitely a scary challenge. I am trying to make these connections, but you know, you feel so separate. You like, you can feel the distance there. At least I can. I don't know if you can, um, but it's definitely, a scary time but all we can do is um play survivor and try to make these connections and know that like even if i never see y'all ever i'm seeing your pretty faces now um and that's enough for me spoken like a true friend i mean one thing that i do notice is that we have four non-tts people to three tts people does that it could that be present in the space? Could that start manifesting? Do you guys fear that some of those commonalities, as arbitrary as they may seem, might start bringing people together? I think that people have more connections than you'd realize. Um, because even though I'm no longer a TTS student, I'm still living in the area. Um, you know, Jack was in my graduating year. Um, I'm a costume designer. So like, I sort of know what Naomi and Claire are going through. Um, I had like set 20 godchildren. And so I had godchildren in uh, theater studies. Um, and so I feel like there's, there's things in place. And then me and Megan met once very briefly. So, There you go. I feel like with these things and with Survivor in, in particular, it's like, I have a breadcrumb of a relationship with you, but God damn it, I will make a whole fucking cake out of what we have. Like, I was like, Brett was in my Discover class. We are married. Like, it is that, that can be the mindset with this game. So I see where you're coming from. Are other people feeling that too? Are other people like reaching for any similarities to draw each other together? 
I was going to say that I almost feel the opposite because even like the people currently at TTS might have not actually met each other yet. So like in my mind, this is kind of just a blank slate in general. Like I know that you haven't had really in-person classes. So while part of me was scared that I'm currently in Colorado, um, the other part of me was like, they haven't met each other either. Like it's fine. Yeah, in many ways, I feel like it's a lot more similar to actual Survivor. And there's, I mean, there's so many ways to organize yourselves and to create differences between yourselves. And it's like in Survivor, you know, the chicken farmer and the business executive find their love of Jesus as a reason to uh, partner up. And I think a lot of us have found our shared love of Jesus as a, a commonality. How telling that it is Good Friday and you bring that dead man into the space. Oh my God. <laughs> that might get edited out. <laughs> Matthew, I will have to say, he was already in my space because my aunt in the, is in the other room currently watching The Passion of the Christ um, <laughs> to remind herself what Jesus went through for us. <laughs> it's her Good Friday tradition. <laughs> Happy Survivor Friday. Happy Survivor Friday. Well, so this way, is like the most normal part of my day. <laughs> in a way, we will be honoring what Good Friday means by sacrificing one of our own. And I, what is that thing that Jesus, I'm not, I'm not Christian. Jesus, he was like, one of you guys are going to betray me. Like, is that the vibe? <laughs> Well, Claire, like seven people are gonna or six people are gonna betray me. <laughs> you're kidding. <laughs> so impending doom, anyone? Clara, <laughs> I actually have a question for you. So <laughs> I want to know now. We're now we're talking about team and bondedness. How do you prove that you are a team player? How do you create those connections? I don't know. It was personally really hard for me because like the way to do it is through slack and like I fear technology like I know if I was alive when like electricity was invented I would have been one of those people that was like witchcraft because it's like I don't understand it I don't know how to work it um but I think like just trying to form connections like the biggest thing was just reaching out to people for me and like I don't know if that's enough. I guess we'll see, like, come elimination time, but, like, just trying to form relationships. So I don't know. I don't know how you prove being a team player, like, I guess until elimination comes. I mean, that's fair. I believe tonight um, some people's true colors might be showing. I'm set. You know what? I'm really milking this for all of you. Um, <laughs> you all look so miserable and the fact that you guys keep muting which you are encouraged to unmute and stay unmuted is really really funny i want to know have you all been talking about what's happening on the other team do you guys have any thoughts anyone that you're looking out for now that it's just us girls are you guys talking about what like was it surprising that colin was eliminated that, was, that surprising. was surprising to me. I thought that was not shocking on my end. So, so in a way, you all see what the team is doing. You're seeing the, the machinations, and you have a pretty good idea of how they play out. I think one thing that's really interesting about this season is since you are all fans, it, this is a question I was pretty excited to ask you all, is that you do know how these people play. You do have guesses. You have seen their personalities on TV, and you've seen their strategies play out. So... I want to know what this team needs to not end up here again, first of all, and second of all, to overwhelm the favorites. So I would argue what our team needs is just, you know, team connection, team spirit, and like camaraderie. As dumb as that sounds, like in the real game of Survivor, if you have a team that like supports each other and pushes through these challenges and like really, really digs one another, really, really like wants to stay together as bad as humanly possible like that's how you win these challenges and when you encourage each other and have that good those good vibes like that's how you win i feel like so megan i guess my question for you is is there anyone that you feel particularly close with that you've developed that good connection with especially seeing as you're not a tts student um 
that's a toughie for me. I feel like I have a lot of on the surface relationships. There's a lot of people I can chat with. I mean, there's a lot of people who have um, made me feel like, you know, even though I am separate, like they still want to work with me and they still want to care about me. But like, I feel like that's a tough question in a game like Survivor where deception is like the point of this game. So I can think I have these allies, think I have these close people, but like every single one of these people could be lying to my face. So ask me that question next elimination and then I'll let you know. Yeah, totally. Joe, were you going to, or Jacob, were you going to say something? Uh, I was just going to say earlier, like, obviously, I think we are all like so nervous in a way that the favorites aren't because they've done this before. Um, and so, yeah, to Megan's point, I think uh, in what makes a strong team right now is just a group of people that, that help us feel less nervous competing against people who have done this before. And I think, yeah, we're starting to feel that way. And I think we're starting to understand each other a little bit more. But uh, also, as Megan said, I think tonight is when we'll find out if what we think that we're understanding is actually true. Joe, you've been super quiet tonight. You're the only person who hasn't spoken yet. So I want to talk to you a little bit. What is going on in your mind tonight? Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I just kind of felt like this kind of calm before the storm kind of situation going on. Like, not like not necessarily that this is going to be a storm but like it's kind of like a kind of quiet dread that i've kind of felt you know leading up to this um because i genuinely don't really like in like if i'm like being honest with myself like i don't really want to like vote anyone off of this like if i'm being completely honest i mean because it, it's just like you know i think kind of what everyone else has been saying like i you know really was hoping to prolong this happening as long as possible um so it's a little nerve-wracking that it's like happening you know tonight it's like i'm like this is it like it's happening right here <laughs> like right now um and also you know i you know i i felt um i i gotta say i feel a little bad um, because I was, did not, uh, participate in the last challenge. And I kind of felt, I, you know, I watching you guys all, you know, do your thing was like, it was, it was so cool. And I was like, so like, like, I was just like cheering you guys. on. I was like, I, I was sitting on my camera, but like, I was like, um, you know, I was really like, just like in love with my team at that moment. And, uh, you know, I felt bad that I, I, I wish I had like more to contribute in that moment. So uh, I, I guess I, I want to know what factors came into play with you sitting out. Was there a group discussion? Did you volunteer yourself? How did that end up happening? It was, I did volunteer. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, cause there, there's kind of like, there, there's kind of this like, and correct if I'm wrong, anyone, but like, there's like, a dynamic, like we almost like didn't like want necessarily, everyone was like, like, uh, I know with like choosing a leader specifically, it, we were all kind of like, oh, does who like who wants to be a leader? It's <laughs> just kind of like, you know, like the, it, it doesn't feel like there's um, the the vibe I get from everyone is like we're all just kind of like trying to do this together, and we don't really want to consider ourselves like above each other or things like that. Um, and I, I I think like just from my perspective, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be like the person who like stays in and makes someone else go out. So I was like, I'll, I'll do it myself. Um, so. So I guess, so, so what I'm hearing is like, in a way that was your way of stepping up for the team to make it so that everybody who was enthusiastic about playing didn't have to put themselves in the spotlight and you decided to do that instead. Yeah, I, th I think that's a better way of summing it up, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm listening, I'm hearing. <laughs> Reflecting. Yeah, absolutely. That is very important to always be considering the good of the team and um, cheering each other on. I think that team sportsmanship right now is incredibly important. Naomi, you have been, it seems, a pretty solid fan of Survivor TTS. In Survivor TTS season one, I did not write this question. I just want to say <laughs> um, we saw two people in particular really leading most of the eliminations 
This is so humiliating. <laughs> we saw two people leading the eliminations. In season two, it was much more all over the place. In season two, every episode felt like a blind side. Every episode was a clean slate. Do you see this season racking up to be <laughs> more like season one or season two? Do you, I, I mean, ideally, you just freaking lead the ship and you tell people what to do and they do it. And then sometimes you're like, I just hope to God I don't get shot in the face. If that makes sense. Season one versus season two. Um, I'd say it's like a bit of both because every, it, like every day something changes. Like if it's a relationship with someone or like a new name that's being thrown out there, like it always changes. So it does feel like season two in that where it's very quick even though we've only been doing this for a week, I feel like my mind is racing all the time. But it's at season one because like we're working together as a team. Like I feel like it's not like one or two people like running the show. It's like everyone talking back and forth, like throwing ideas out there. It's never like like a single entity that's like running this team, I think. Fascinating. Um, it seems like all of you are slowly nodding in tepid agreement. <laughs> that is what I'm gathering and what I'm tasting. Izzy, I do want to ask you. So, you know, you brought up yes, or on Wednesday that you had given Brett some sexy man playing cards, kind of divulging a little bit of your relationship to your team. Do you worry that or do you see your relationship with Brett, who is a very strong, smart, and scary player, as a target, as a, as a means to be a target on yourself, or as an advantage to being able to work with someone who is very famously conniving? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spill the tea because I wanna be messy like that. Um, one of my main goals coming on here is to crush Brett into the ground. So, um, I'm, I'm here because uh, Brett's my friend and I watched him play and he's a really great player and that's what makes me want to beat him mercilessly and blindside him so hard that he doesn't see it coming. And so I think that my um, relationship with him will allow me to get close in a way that will help him not see it coming when I absolutely mercilessly destroy him um, in the most painful, humiliating manner possible. So for everyone on this team, that's what, like, aside from winning, that's my main goal. So, and if he sees it, he sees it. I'm sure he's expecting it. <laughs> and I'm sure he's gonna, he would fucking love it. Oh, um, mm -hmm. he would expect nothing less from me. What I'm gathering today is it seems like you all have a really amazing fire and determination. And it seems like you've all worked very, very hard for, for team sportsmanship and being a team together. You know, it all seems like right now, what all of you are saying is like, we are a team, we've got this, we are together and it is all love. But you're all still terrified. You're all still literally pooping your pants. Yeah, Jacob? Well, I think if we were comfortable, then we'd, like, be in trouble. So it's good that we're feeling like this. That means that, like, we're doing something right. I yeah. Mean, telling that, like, all of us really want to play together. Like, we all want to play together really bad. And, like, you're, you're talking about how we're spouting sportsmanship. Like, I'm right there with you. Like, I want to be together and play this game together, which makes this elimination so much worse. Cause it's like either like I go home, which stinks, or I have to send somebody else home who I really like and wanted to play with, which also stinks. And I'm really unhappy about it. <laughs> yeah, I think the hardest thing is we, in a, in a inspired fit of bonding, played two truths and a lie with each other. And so we got to know all sorts of fun, weird facts. And it's really hard to vote someone out when you know really weird, strange, fun trivia about them. Yeah, I think as we sort of said earlier too, I think we're gonna learn a lot in a few minutes. And I'm really interested to see how six of us carry that learning and that energy into the challenge that comes. And it actually does 
give me a new level of respect for the fact that the favorites did this last week and beat us, that they had a whole elimination, that they had all these feelings and emotions, and then they came to the challenge. So hopefully six of us are able to do the same thing. Well, I will say you are wrong about it being in a few minutes. I think right now it is time to vote. And this time, one of your fellow contestants adrift. As I say your names, please private message me the first person you will be eliminating from your team. Naomi. Clara. Jacob. Megan. Joe. Izzy, and Jack. All right, the votes are in. Our first vote is for Jacob. We have a vote for Joe. We have a second vote for Joe. We have a vote for Naomi. Two votes, Joe. One vote, Jacob. One vote, Naomi. We have a third vote for Joe. And a fourth vote for Joe. I'm sorry, that is all it takes. I'm so sorry, Joe. I really, really, really deeply wish we could have gotten to know you more. You were already such a kind, sweet light. I really appreciated getting to hear you talk today. And I really cannot wait to see what you do in this world. You truly, truly are such a nice person, really, from what you just said today. Wow, so sweet, so kind. It seems like everyone else here fully agrees. Do If you have any parting words that you would like to share, please share them. You know, in, in, a, in a way, I'm kind of relieved because, I mean, like what I said earlier, I wholeheartedly believe that. And I really would rather, you know, it be me than, than having to vote any of you all off and, and see you guys, you know, not continue to, to work and, and, and do this thing together. Um, and I'm so excited to, to keep rooting rooting for you guys throughout the throughout the rest of this um thank you so much for you know everything <laughs> um and the kind words you've had for me uh and the friendship um yeah i really appreciate it and thank you guys <laughs> that's it well uh, it looks like everyone is pretty freaking devastated um so know that you had a profound impact, even if it was short-lived. Thank you, Joe. You may leave this one. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys. That was awful. You all look like you just killed someone, but I watched you do it too. Dang. Ugh. <laughs> you guys, that was rough. Quite heartbreaking. But welcome to the show. It is hard. So um, that was your first elimination of TTS Survivors Season 3. Now let's do your second. I'm very sorry. You are fans of this show. You know this show is a life ruiner. I am so horrifically sorry. I do not, please do not think that I take this job lightly. I'm merely the messenger. The second elimination was always planned to be a double. Very sorry, no matter who went. I am so upset right now. Unbelievable. This is fucked up. This is fucked up. And as I say your name, please message me. The next person you will be sending home first up is Izzy. 
Oh, why did I haven't decided yet? Oh, Clara, Megan, Jack, Naomi, and Jacob. All right, our first vote is for Izzy. We have a vote for Jacob. We have a vote for Clara. That's one vote Jacob, one vote Izzy, one vote Clara. We have a second vote for Izzy. We have a third vote for Izzy. And a fourth and final vote for Izzy. I am very sorry to tell you what you already know, Izzy. This means that you have just been eliminated of, from Survivor TTS season three. Let me just say, your passion and determination and cool ass attitude is really freaking awesome and really deserves a lot more time and attention. So you're pretty freaking cool. And I hope that you destroy Brett, even if it's <laughs> this game. Do it for all of us, because we all need you to do it. If you have any words you'd like to share, the floor is yours. Wow. Okay, so I did not see this coming fully. Fully did not see it coming. This was a blind side. So I thought I had I thought I had some relationships that I guess we didn't have. But I do want to talk to everyone afterwards because I've had fun talking to you all in the Slack. But I'm I'm gonna be a little pissed for like a little bit. Like let I'm gonna be a little pissed for a little bit. Um please beat the I also want to have like nasty things to say and like drama to spill but I don't so I'm I'm gonna I'm going out assuming that you send me home because I'm the biggest threat and that's how I'm gonna live in my French vanilla fantasy thank you so much Izzy seems like everyone truly was just scared of you thank you so much you may leave the zoom all right that's the end of the torture for all of you Pretty awful. Really, 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 really freaking bad. Um, you just got a really raw and pungent taste of what this show is. So uh, buckle up, take some deep breaths. You've been through the toughest part. You've been through the gauntlet. Now it's time to get on the same page and take on the day. Thank you so much. This has been the second and third eliminations of TTS Survivor Season 3, Fans versus Favorites. Welcome to our third challenge. Sorry, what? Oh, oh my god. god, oh my god, you got it. Skip, 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 skip. Uh, no, I'm I really feeling this one. I'm not a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs>